Hi, I'm Camilla. And I'm Kay. And we are the, the Five Resellers. Resellers. And today we are sharing with you some of what sold this past week so that you can know what's selling online for good money if you also go to thrift stores and outlet centers and all of that, pick up items for cheap and sell it for more online. Yeah. So if you're looking to do that, we have some great information in this video. We're gonna share some of our top sales from the past week, all of our numbers, and we're gonna share a little bit of what we're doing with that money. We're investing it, and so we'll give you an update on our investments. Then we'll share what we call our community bolo. So these are items that other resellers have sold that are really good, so we'll share one of those this week. To start us off, we sold this Mountain Hardware zip-up fleece jacket. The buyer was all in fifty-one twenty on eBay. Yeah, so that was the price plus shipping. Mm -hmm. And so this is a really good brand to be on the lookout for. Mountain Hardware, we've sold a couple things by this brand. We don't find it that often because we live in Houston and people, I feel like in Houston are that outdoorsy. Right. Like I feel like people are more kind of like, they like to go to restaurants, they like to go to like movies, things like that, not really like hike. They don't really that many places to hike. Yeah, there are only hills. There are no mountains or anything. Yeah, and really like you can only really be outside for like three months of the year. There's <laughs> the time you want to be in the air conditioning, you know. We don't find it that often, but when we do pick it up, we love selling it because it sells for good money. This yeah. is a great brand to be on the lookout for. It sells pretty quick too. This next one, a very surprising sale. We sold this Aqua Scutum Peacoat for ninety one eighty five on eBay to an international buyer in Japan. Mm -hmm. So this was a vintage Peacoat and we Sometimes we'll pick up vintage coats, but only if they're in really good condition. I think this had maybe one little spot on it, but that was it. It was pretty unique. Like, I don't see this pattern very often. It looked very cool to me, so we decided to pick it up. We priced it at $75, expecting to maybe sell for about $50. The person came in and bought it outright at $75 plus shipping. So we are really happy with that sale because honestly, we kind of thought it would be around for a while. Yeah. Vintage items tend to sit for longer. But this sold very quickly and we we're really happy with that. If you're on eBay, you should definitely have global shipping program on so that you can make a good sale like this. We sold these Adidas Boost Yeezys for $59.65 on eBay. Yeah, so when we picked these up, we didn't really know what they were. We just thought that they looked kind of cool. Yeah, I thought they had the Yeezy vibe, but I wasn't mm -hmm. exactly sure until I took a little closer look. It had the YZY little mm -hmm. on there. So Yeah, yeah. King originally thought they were like adidas brand like not knockoffs but like you know how different brands will do like with if one brand has a really good you know item the other brand will do something like kind of mm -hmm. similar but for cheaper well he thought that was what this was but turns out they were legit right because i i don't know i'm not into the sneaker culture yeah but anyway we took pictures of them they weren't in the best condition they were kind of a little bit like yellowed mm -hmm. um but we decided to list them anyway I really don't like cleaning shoes, so if I'm taking pictures of shoes and they're just kind of like a little bit dirty, I'll just list them. Like, I don't care. And but so, these are pretty dirty. <laughs> we went ahead and listed them anyway. Yeah. I was surprised I sold it for $50 in the condition that they were. Yeah. We got tons of offers, you know, $20, $30, $40, 50 Well, finally, someone bought them for 50 Yeah, finally. But it was like just a couple days of like constant offers from people mm -hmm. and we only had them on ebay and so finally they sold for just the 50 dollars mm -hmm. after just a few days so really happy with that sale we were saying we were actually out of town that weekend and king was saying you know if they don't sell this weekend i'll fix them up and we'll list them for hire and then they did sell so yeah oh well, <laughs> well <laughs> you know 50 dollars with hardly any work that's great yeah Especially because so, we picked them up at the bins. Yeah, we kind of have a rule around here where we're trying to get 80 for the 20. I learned that from Camilla's dad, where you basically put in 20% of the effort to get 80% of the results. That's exactly what we did. You know, we put a little bit of effort, we got it from the bins, and we got $50 out of it. So we'll take mm -hmm. it. Exactly. We sold this new tag Taylor Stitch pants for seventy nine sixty five on eBay. First, they were new. Second, we bought them from the Thread Up Rescue box. And lastly, we got good feedback already. So we're really happy with that sale transaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Taylor Stitch is one of our favorite, favorite brands to pick up. We've been finding it kind of frequently recently. Like yeah. all of a sudden we got like a lot of Taylor Stitch things. Yeah. It's probably because we have like an eagle eye for it now because <laughs> yeah. we just love this brand and sells really quickly. These took longer to sell. I think we had them priced kind of high. I had them priced at a hundred mm. and it was because I didn't see any others that were like this in, our, in that size. And so I'm happy to kind of sell them for 70. That was originally what I had in my spreadsheet of like how much I thought that they would actually sell for. It's just a reminder that, you know, you can price things high, but it will take longer for them right. to sell. It's always nice to sell something that you don't usually sell. Mm -hmm. And for us, that's purses. 
we sold this Michael Kors purse for $30 on Facebook Marketplace. So this came from King's sister and she had given us this like a really long time ago but we know basically nothing about purses and it's not in our usual like process of things so mm -hmm. it took us a really long time to list this then when we did it sold really quickly in just a couple days it was a full price sale on facebook marketplace and that was even better because it was thirty dollars five percent fees so we made a good amount of money on it mm -hmm. because we didn't even spend any money to get it in the right. first place so that was a great sale we were really happy with that next was this new tag wool sweater by talbots what mm -hmm. <laughs> we sometimes pick up talbots it. We sold it for $49.65 on eBay. So this was 100% merino wool and it was new. It was a more recent style. I think it was still like on their website even. And so we picked it up. I knew it would sell well. I figured, you know, it would sell definitely more than $20 because the original price on it was like $119 or something like that. Which, I mean, it's 100% merino wool. Like it's a really nice sweater. And it sold really quickly and the person came and bought it outright for the $40, which was awesome. And that was just a great sale. It just goes to show you that Talbot's items, you know, there's kind of a range of things, you know, like the t-shirts and some of the pants and things might not go for very much, but some of the more high quality fabrics and materials, those can go for a good amount of money. So that's not our first Talbot sale that we've had. That's been a really good sale. It just is a matter of looking at what the item is made out of. We sold these Lululemon pants. They were called the ABC jogger for $75 on Macari. So these were a men's jogger. They were also in an extra large, but I did end up paying $35 for them at a Buffalo exchange. So we didn't make all that much profit on it because we had spent so much on it originally, but I was pretty happy with that sale. I, you know, the buyer already rated us, gave us five stars. We sold on Mercari. So I kind of was hoping for more like 90 for them. Mm. And just because they were in a good size and they were really in good condition, but I wasn't really getting the traction that I was hoping for having them listed that high. So I decided to take the $75 offer. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Too. Yeah, I mean, still $30 profit. So mm -hmm. we'll take it. Exactly. And the thing with Buffalo Exchange is that I'm bringing items in that I've gotten from the bins or I've gotten free from people. And so $35 is really maybe only like four items. So it's really maybe only about eight or ten dollars. Yeah, eight or ten dollars of like actual money that I put in to then get that kind of multiplied amount to buy this pair of joggers. As far as the accounting goes, we put $35 because that's yeah. what we paid from the right. Buffalo Exchange. Because we recorded, you know, how much we made when we traded in the items. So we want to make sure that our accounting, we kind of keep the same system of accounting. Yeah, consistent. Like, yeah. Not tax advice. We sold this caftan by Winlar for $30 on Facebook Marketplace. Okay, this was really surprising to me because it has been listed since September and it sold, you know, just now on Facebook Marketplace for full price, which is crazy because I feel like mm. Facebook Marketplace, it's one of those places that things sell right away or they don't sell at all. And yeah. so this was really surprising. I must have been on my like list of delete and relist on Facebook Marketplace. And that's why it sold but for full price that was awesome i was expecting more to get like 20 to 25 and i priced it up a little bit but mm. really happy with that sale caftans are pretty cool i feel like people are kind of into them right now so really happy with that sale next we sold this filson button up for 31.60 on ebay we probably would have gotten more but i didn't notice this little spot on the shirt otherwise filson is a great brand and mm -hmm. it's pretty sought after it got great sell-through rate it did have that spot and it's still sold for 31.60 so mm -hmm. you know if it's a great brand and it's got something wrong with it maybe just some small thing it's worth listing you know this actually happens to us kind of often where we'll get something and we hadn't noticed that it was damaged yeah. often it happens like as we're listing it because we have the bright lights to take pictures and then it's like under the bright lights is like you can see every imperfection you're like oh my gosh how did i not see this like i looked it over for like 10 minutes in the yeah. bins then it's like well i already washed it or I already steamed it i've already had i have it hanging right here i might as well just take the pictures and list it so that's usually what we do yeah the lights at the thrift store just really throw you off it's i know it's just meant to do that you know? and then yeah, there's like the, the mind control i think that they pump through the the vents to be like bye 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 <laughs> <laughs> so okay the last sale that we wanted to share was this red and pink and white this really nice shading of the kind of valentine's colors crocheted blanket for 30 dollars on poshmark yeah so this one my mom actually got for us from a church rover sale over the summer so we've had it since september but it finally sold just in time for valentine's day yeah. i would assume someone is decorating their house with this and the reason it sold for so little i think we had originally listed it closer to 45 or 50 mm -hmm. 
And at the end of the week, we were noticing that we were not where we wanted to be in terms of profit. So I sent out 25% offers on our whole Poshmark closet, basically. So this sold on a 25% offer sent to Likers. So that was through Posher VA. I was able to send bulk offers to, you know, everyone who would like one of my items and pretty much just set the parameters. I said, you know, 25% off on items that have been listed more than just a couple of days, you know, that I wanted to make more than $5. So that's always my, my yeah. bottom limit because that ensures basically that we'll actually make money off of the item versus, you know, cause usually we spend about $2 around there. So that gives me enough kind of buffer to actually make a profit. So once you set those parameters, you just kind of set go and then it sends out all of those offers which is really nice we got a ton of sales from that like so many so you'll see a lot of those next week because we set it late thursday evening and then a lot of them came in on friday actually so yeah. you'll Thanks see fun. some of those nice next week yeah so yeah. thing spot it's awesome Pasha va has been such a game changer with our poshmark closet being able to just kind of set things and kind of forget about it really mm -hmm. is like just to be able to you know, have Poshmark kind of run on its own so that we can just focus on listing things and getting them up rather than trying to do all of that busy work, I guess, busy on work. Poshmark. So if you're interested in signing up for Poshmark VA, we have an affiliate link down in our description. So you can check it out. You get two weeks free before you have to enter in like your credit card information or anything like that. So it's definitely worth trying out. So one of our YouTube subscribers suggested that maybe we go through some of our bread and butter and maybe some of our duds. So we actually decided to talk about two duds this week. And the first one is this Outdoor Voices, these pair of shorts that we only sold for $8. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we only made a profit of like $4. But it's yeah. important to let you know that Outdoor Voices is a pretty good brand. But this one also had kind of a stain. It had some issues with it. Yeah. Yeah. Like a major stain. Like not like a small little thing. But like on the back, it was like maybe it had been washed with bleach or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so it was like a whole part of the shorts. I mean, you can, we'll put a, a little picture in here. Yeah. You can see it. I mean, it's obvious. It's like, these are not super wearable. Yeah. I listed them anyway. I figured, you know, they were men's shorts. So I figured men sometimes just like don't care and they just need shorts and they just want cheap shorts and they want them, you know, to come to their house. So I figured that someone would buy them and someone right. did for $8 and we made our money back, which is yeah. great. Make sure that you are checking over your items in the thrift store. We tend to... And by we, I mean me. I tend to just get like excited. I'm like, oh, look, a brand. And I kind of look over it quickly and then I put it in their cart. And you really have to be careful about what you're buying because you don't want to just be wasting money on things that are damaged or things that, you know, aren't quite what you were looking for to pick up just because you got caught up in the excitement of, you know, finding something or sourcing. Right. The other dud was this pair of Donald J. Pliners that we sold for $15 on Poshmark. We only made $5 profit. Yeah. So we had bought these, I think from, I think it was St. Vincent de Paul. Yeah, I think so. In Cincinnati. And so we had paid close to $7 for them. And so that's not really great when you pay $7 and then you only sell something for 15. So usually we only pay bad. about $2 until we make, you know, closer to $10 on items like that. So it's not really worth it for us. Like we don't really like going to just regular thrift stores. Yeah. One, because we just like don't like that experience as much. It doesn't feel as like fun and gamified right. as like going through the bins, you know. But also it means that, you know, we are have to be a lot more selective in what we pick up, which means that we spend more time at the thrift store and then we get fewer items. So mm -hmm. to us, it's not as worth it to right. do that than to go to the bins and be able to pick up like a volume of things. So it's just something that we have to keep in mind. Yeah, it's just our business model. It's mm -hmm. just different. When we go to the regular thrift stores, I think it's probably more worth it to try to find bigger dollar items. Mm -hmm. That would make it worth our time. So mm -hmm. yeah, just different. Yeah. Okay, so now it's time for our numbers. So we sold a total of 46 items last week for a gross revenue of $1,258.05. Our cost of goods for those 46 items was $138.82. And so on eBay, we sold a total of 19 items for $420.42. On Poshmark, we sold 17 items for a total of $160.51. Mm -hmm. On Facebook Marketplace, we sold four items for $74.57. And on Mercari, we sold five items for $99.95. So pretty good week overall. Not really where we wanna be in terms of profit, because our total profit for the week was $779.18. Hmm. So almost 800, 
but last week we're at a thousand and that's really what our goal right. is. So we we're kind of close to our profit goal, but you know, just not quite there yet. So it's really interesting that eBay, we sold almost the same number of items as we did on Poshmark, but the profit was so much higher. We yeah. sold a lot of really good things over on eBay. I think that's because we list first on eBay and so Poshmark is a couple of days behind on getting listing. So mm -hmm. if we have a really good item, it gets seen first on eBay. So buyers are able to purchase it before we even get it to Poshmark in the first place. Yeah, we prefer that anyway, because there are lower fees. So yeah. it's an advantage for our business model. Exactly. The other thing we're working on is that we're trying to get our numbers up to a thousand listings. And so we're mm -hmm. almost at 800 at this point. A thousand mm -hmm. is where we think we can get a consistent thousand dollars profit each week so we're getting really close yeah exactly so part of our calculation is you know looking at how many items we have available in our store so mm -hmm. that we can achieve you know a certain number of items selling each week so that we can you know kind of have that understanding that we're going to make a certain amount each week even though we know we'll kind of fluctuate up and down yeah. a little bit but it helps us kind of sustain that momentum that we're looking for with camilla listing 100 items a week we're actually hoping to get to a thousand in about four weeks or so, and then hopefully eleven or twelve hundred, you know, before the baby comes. So hopefully we keep this momentum going. So this week we put about a hundred dollars from Macari's profits into our total stock market index experiment for you to see. And here's where we're at right now. It's not great again, but it is climbing, and that's what we want to see. We want to keep dollar cost averaging into the total stock market index as it continues to rise, you know, so we can capture those gains as they continue to rise. And over time, we are confident that it will continue to rise and get back up to where it was before and surpass it. And the other thing we wanted to talk about this week is that the risk tolerance that we have is pretty low. So if you have a pretty low risk tolerance as well, this is probably something that you should consider. A lot of people like to dabble in individual stocks. The total stock market index takes a little bit of all of those stocks. So it's pretty low risk compared to all of those, you know, stock pickers. And at the same time, it lowers your returns in theory, but that's a pretty good trade-off for us. That's the reason mm -hmm. why we do it. We don't really want to risk a whole lot. You know, the past 40 years, it's gone up. And so the next 40 years, we can kind of bank on that it will continue to go up as well. That's how we're preparing for our retirement. That's basically our investing strategy, our risk tolerance in a nutshell. We're back this week with one community bolo and it comes from Hauled by Hollies. And Kyle sent us this iron and resin wax Nautilus jacket. He bought it for $25, but sold it for 150. So he paid up for it, but he made a really good return. Mm -hmm. And this is a really good bolo. We've never heard of it, have we? No. Okay, we've never heard of it <laughs> and we've never picked it up. So really great. We have sold one wax jacket before by Barber. It feels kind of weird. And if you're looking through the bins, then yeah. it is definitely something that someone would probably pass up because they think it's damp and it's like really junky, but it's meant to be waxed. So be on the lookout for iron and resin. In general, be on the lookout for wax jackets. They tend to be pretty good items for work wear. And so, yeah, and thank you so much for sending that to us, Kyle. We actually met Kyle in Austin the other week mm -hmm. and it was just so cool meeting other resellers. He sells a lot of different things. It's so interesting, so underrated. You should definitely follow him on Instagram and watch his YouTube. He sells just like some of the coolest stuff that I've seen. Mm -hmm. So definitely give him a follow. And he recently had a baby, so he's got a lot of baby photos in his Instagram too, so super cute. So give him a follow, let him know that we sent you. Yeah, and we'll actually be on his channel. We'll be going live with him on February 20th, which is a Sunday. It's a Sunday night. Mm -hmm. And so you will have to tune in for that, but you can watch our Instagram or our YouTube to be on the lookout to do that. Um, he is just so fun to mm -hmm. hang out with. So we would love to have you hang out with us that night. So thank you so much for watching this. Leave a comment down below of how your week has been, what have been some of your best sales. We would love to hear from you. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. That tells YouTube that people like this and that they should show it to more people, which is always fun. We love to meet new people and we love to have new people in our community. So if you are new to our videos and you are thinking of subscribing, we would love if you would do that. We would love to just have you as a part of our YouTube community. So hit that subscribe button down below. Yeah, keep that passion burning, y'all. When you make mistakes like us and you, you know, forget or miss an item that is mm -hmm. damaged, but it's a quality item, don't beat yourself up. Still list it, give it a try. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you make mistakes, you kind of have to give yourself the 
grace to continue mm -hmm. forward and really it's not going to be all that bad so keep that passion burning y'all we're really rooting for you we hope that things are going well and we'll see you later bye one of our youtube subscribers <laughs> a freaking dragon dance going on over there <laughs> maybe they have a dragon dance going on Lunar New Year. <laughs> Shout out to the Hoogs for giving us this cute little baby coat. Yeah, Do you look remember at this? It's really cute. Yeah. We love it. We love it so much. Yeah, we're gonna keep it for our little baby. Yeah. Funny because um, they didn't know that we were pregnant at that time, and they got it for us in October. I know. And we had just found out that we were, we were pregnant, so. That was just really yeah. interesting. Very meant to be. Thanks, Hoogs. MTB. Yeah, meant to be. <laughs> yeah. But baby's doing well. Yeah. They're moving around and stuff. Yeah. So fun.